In this session, we're going to talk about how you name things in Excel. At least get started on it. Now, a lot of this material is also covered, especially the part about relative and absolute naming, in the material on Excel basics, which you will find in the introductory module for the class uh, earlier in the course materials. So let's get started here. And there are a lot of different kinds of Excel objects. We, we've, just, we've looked at workbooks, and workbooks are made up of worksheets or spreadsheets. But there are other things, too. We'll, we'll be writing uh, macros, you can have charts, and there's other kinds of things as well. Each object that you work with in Excel has to be identifiable by a name, so it can be distinguished by, from other objects of the same type. And what we're going to do on naming is start by looking at cells. So, first of all, there's a built-in naming scheme for the cells on a worksheet. So, here's a new worksheet. And we have the column names across the top, the letters, and the row numbers down the side. So a cell is named by its row and column, and the name shows up in this name box. So you can see here are a few names that I'm clicking on. Here's A5, here's B2, and so on. And I showed you the name box. Now, biggest reason to use cell names is to use them in creating formulas. And we use a relative name when we want the formula to adjust uh, based on what row or column it's in, a copy. So we write a formula for one cell and then we want it to work the same way on other cells. That's when we would use a relative name. Uh, we use an absolute name when we want to always refer to the same cell in every copy of the formula. So, for example, here's a little spreadsheet I made, and I'm showing you here a list of numbers, and then I wrote this formula equals A1 plus 3. Formulas always start with equals. That's how Excel knows it's a formula and not just some text you're writing. And this is using a relative name, the name A1. So, what we're doing is adding 3 to A1, and now what we want to do is, uh, oh, and here you can see the answer. We put the formula in this cell B1. So after we pushed return, we got A1 plus 3 in cell B1. Now suppose we copy this formula and paste it down the column. This is, uh, this is what we get. And here it's showing us the formula for cell B2. So you see that B2 has the number 18 in it. But the formula is equals A2 plus 3. Now, why is that A2 instead of A1? Because this is a relative name. So when we used A1 here, it meant the cell just to the left. So in, when we use it here, it's also going to mean the cell just to the left. If we look a little further down, like in row 4, again, we're using the cell just to the left, and each copy refers to its own row. Now, there are a lot of built-in functions that you can use. Again, uh, I went over this in the Excel Basics section. Let's take a look here using an example of the function average. So here I'm doing the average of cells A1 to A8. And recall the notation. It's A1 colon A8. And here's the answer. So this is in cell A10. Now here what I want to do is subtract the average from each element. So I'm going to write the formula and then copy it. I'm writing it in cell B1. So what I want to do is take cell A1, the same row, and that I made relative. But now I want to subtract in each case this average, which is in cell A10. So to make sure I'm always using cell A10, I use the dollar signs. Okay, and when I paste, this is what I get. Now, let's try it again. And just to show you that the relative nature carries over, I'm going to copy again. So here what I did was I copied the formula in cell, in, in column B, over to column C. And you can see what's happening here. For example, here in column B, I'm doing 
A2 plus 3. Now, A2 is the cell just to the left. So for column C, using the absolute, the sorry, the relative addressing, it should be B2 plus 3. And you can see that here. When I copy these formulas over to here, that's what I got. Now, suppose I wanted it to change the current row, but keep using column A. Well, then I can use a partially absolute address. Instead of using dollar $A, dollar $1, I'll just use dollar $A and let the 1 be relative by not putting a dollar sign. So here you can see I changed the formula, and now it's coming out to be the same as column B because I'm always using column A as part of my formula. Okay, so that's relative versus absolute names. Uh, you can also give a meaningful name to a cell, a user-defined name. So what I want to do is name cell A10 the average of the column, and here it is. So I, all you have to do is highlight this cell, type the name in the name box. I have a little typo here, which I'll just carry through. And here's my definition of what it's going to be. So this is showing the formula, but here where the name would be, I typed a name that I want, and I just push return. And now when I look at my formula, instead of using the dollar sign A, dollar sign 10, it's using the name I gave. So suppose you use a lot of names, then you might like a good way to keep track of them. Now there is a way to do this. It's a little different in Windows versus the Mac. So I'm going to show you on Windows first and then we'll look at how you do it on the Mac. This is a name manager in Windows. And right now I've defined the name column average. And this shows me it's on sheet one and it's in position A10, absolute. These defined names are always absolute, by the way. So there's an issue to talk about here. What about, why is that, let me go back a sec. Why is this sheet one exclamation mark here? Well, basically, there could be many worksheets in our workbook, and each one has a cell A10. So what that sheet one exclamation mark is doing is telling us that what we're referring to is the A1 on sheet one. not sheet two or whatever. So by analogy, you can think of cell names on a worksheet as being like names in a family. Uh, within the worksheet, everybody knows, you know, if you just say B2, you mean B2 on the same worksheet. But that's like everybody in a family usually has a unique name within their family. But if we consider a class in school, say, there could be several people with the same first name. And then the teacher has to use a qualifying last name to say which Mary or which Johnny uh, she's trying to refer to. So the sheet name is like the family name. It makes it clear exactly which A1 we mean. So as when we wrote sheet one exclamation A1. So those, are, those will be used if you're referring to cells from one sheet to another or when you define a name and that's known throughout the whole workbook. So there's a term for this, it's called the scope. The scope of a name is the part of the worksheet or workbook where the name is, has unique meaning and can be used without modification. So the scope of a name that we give to an object, like column average, is the whole workbook. And that's why when we look at the definition, it also has the sheet name in it. Inside of a worksheet when you're referring to another cell again you can just use the cell name you don't have to put the sheet name that's understood now you can also name a range you just highlight the cells you want to name and then go to the formulas tab and click it and find the define names panel and click on define name so here i'm showing you this again in the windows version so here's define name so i'm on the formulas tab I've highlighted the range that I want to name, and I type the name head counts. And actually, so here when I say define name, I'll put it in here and click 
click OK. And here it is. So now I'm taking the average of the head counts, which is here. So now if I look back at the name manager again, I'm going to see that it's the range from A1 to A8. And again, everything is absolute. And we're referring to the sheet number to make it an absolute reference. And here it shows me the first few values as they are right now. Now on the Mac, it's a little harder. You don't have the name manager as such, but there is a way to find them. Let's first define some names. So here I've highlighted cell A1, and I'm going to name it root. So I just selected the cell, typed the name root in the name box, and hit return. That's the same as on the PC. Now here, what I did was I, I created a formula. Um, I put the two here. And then I said this guy was going to be one B1 times root. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then I copied it down, so each time I'm multiplying by 2. So I got the powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. Now I want to create a named range called powers. So I just select the range and type the name in the box. Now. Suppose I've done a bunch of these and I want to find the list of definitions. Well, then I'm going to use the Insert menu and follow the entries, Insert, Name, Define. So when we come over here, I, I went to the menu, which is off the screen here. And again, I, I went Insert, then I chose Names under Insert, and I chose Define under Names. And this gives me a little box, which shows me a little window here which shows me all the defined names in this workbook and I can click on a name to see the definition and you can see this is very similar to what we had in the name manager in the Windows version. Now why would you want to use defined names? Well because it can make your spreadsheets much much more readable in particular your formulas and less error prone and this is especially true if you use a lot of formulas. So Think about doing this, and we'll be doing a little more of it as we go along in the term.